All right. Hey, good morning, everybody. Mill Spec Ops Monkey here. It's going to be your sit rep. It's 11 a.m. Central Time coming to you live here from the great state of Texas in the Monkey Lounge. And uh, we got a lot to cover today. As always, we're going to talk about this, uh, these fires going on in Texas and the fact that uh, they were literally surrounding one of our nuclear bomb manufacturing facilities. It uh, That can get pretty hairy. I can only imagine how big of an explosion that would be if this does not get contained. So we're going to talk about that. We're also just going to look at the map. What's going on in the world in terms of flights? Where are things headed? And uh, we've got a lot of movement, a lot of activity. I believe we are preparing ourselves, and I think Putin as well is thinking the same thing, for some type of a spring offensive. And God help us, this is going to get really interesting. So we'll talk about that uh, just from a data point perspective, uh, we're going to look at a lot of the Hilo activity, H60s, uh, H47s, right, the Chinooks. And then we're going to look at some transports, C17, C27s, kind of to give us just a read on what's happening um, within, uh, you know, the big transport uh, movement aspect. So, okay, let's do this. I'm going to jump over here to our mini. Actually, uh, yeah, let's do that right out of the gate. One thing I did want to tell you, if you haven't done so and you're still trying to Pull together your prep. Uh, now is the time to do so. You don't want to wait until things go hot because if you do, you're not going to be able to get your hands on it or you're going to be waiting for it when you already need it. And so um, we, uh, uh, this actual video is sponsored by My Patriot Supply. They are uh, an affiliate uh, program that we have with them that uh, you can go into monkeyworksprep.com. That's monkeyworksprep.com. Or you can just hit that little QR code right over here on uh, the banner, and it'll take you straight there. They have a current special right now, $60 off a four-week emergency food supply. And uh, that's uh, actually, that's not too bad. 177, it gives you over 2,000 calories a day, 16 different varieties with a 25-year shelf life. And it includes everything from br uh, breakfast, lunch, dinners, drinks, snacks. I almost said brunch. And uh, of course, it's packed into two rugged buckets. If you want to see what these buckets look like, I'm just going to go back one frame and I just want to bring this into the shot. But this right here is uh, how big these buckets are. They are full of freeze dried food. And uh, when I say full, I mean to the top. Uh, this particular one is um, actually, uh, this is the bean trio with rice. Um, uh, I've buy these things up every chance I get, uh, but just goes to show you how big these actually are, and um, it's uh, it's a lot of food, and uh, if you're thinking about taking care of you and your family, that's uh, already set up for you. Just go out there, monkeyworksprep.com. That's monkeyworksprep.com. All right, let's get into the deets. Uh, there's uh, just so much to report on. One, I'm going to start off here. Uh, actually, I'm going to start off in Skyglass, as always. Had an interesting one that I caught today. This is a U2 you see on the screen here. Um, and uh, that uh, little black, uh, if you're not familiar with this aircraft, it is a recon plane. Eddy 42 is the call sign, and it is up currently over eh, kind of the north. Well, let me just give you the exacts. It's not giving me the exacts. Well, imagine that. Well, anyway, it uh, looks to be, let me just kind of, dig into that. Yeah, it looks like it's to, just to the west of Dayton, Ohio. So maybe it's doing some touch and goes there. But anyway, that's a U2. All right. Now, uh, again, just an interesting data point for you. But we get over here to our, our main focus, and that is the U.S. and the military aircraft that are up. And uh, it is sitting around 260. But keep in mind, I've taken out 58 Text 2s, I've already stripped out 35 EC-45 helos and then uh, 22 T-38s. Now, notice that you don't see a lot right here where we normally would see, right? That's because I've taken them out. But also, we got a lot of weather moving through the area in Texas. So that's going to limit these numbers uh, to where they are today. So uh, if we look at the NAs, these are folks that are flying incognito. There's 58 of those, right? Those are people that uh, don't want to be tracked, right? And then look at the H60 activity. There's 38 of those, right? Just to give you a kind of general feel. Now, this in here is typically going to be some training. This is probably not, all right? And um, that is just over the United States, uh, 38. Okay, now if I go show you the H60 
just over the last couple of days, almost 600 flights in the last three days, as you can see. Uh, starting it off over in Europe, very active, kind of in that uh, Hungary and, um, uh, well, actually just to the left of Hungary towards, well, that would be Austria, all right? And then uh, you can see we go down into the Middle East. I, I've got one trace that comes out of Kuwait into Iraq, all right? All right, so that's going to be a little H-60 Blackhawk rolling in and out again the last three days. And then you've got some activity there. looks to be in Okinawa. We'll go a little north into South Korea, and that looks to be active as well as uh, some activity there over in Japan. And then we head down south to Australia. I'm not seeing uh, – well, I do. i got one little tiny H-60 blip right there uh, just off the west – or sorry, the east coast of Australia – and let me get us over here to the United States. And we've got a lot of lot of activity and movement here across the United States. Now, keep in mind, in the United States, these are not all military assets, okay? This equipment could belong to Homeland Security. It could belong to um, various different organizations within the federal construct, right? Uh, but the military, for the most part, you see that stuff coming out of Fort Carson, it looks like, headed down to the San Diego side, off the water, the coastline there in California. All right. Now let me go back to our mini and uh, we're still kind of peeling the, the banana back here. We take out the H sixties. Now, if we look at active KC one thirty fives across the United States, you can see the East coast is kind of cranking uh, this here in the center of the U S is also cranking. I don't have uh, the, well, let me see if I can find the Pegasus in here as well. Uh, looks like that's a, a much lower number. We won't even worry about it. Let's just uh, press on, but this is where they are right now live up in the air. Now, if I go over and look at what we've had over the last couple days, um, we're going to start out over in Japan. Uh, again, air refuelers coming out of Okinawa, out of Guam, in and out of uh, Japan, all right? And then go down to Australia and see if I've got any. No air refuelers in Australia. I always find that kind of strange. Nothing in Africa. Uh, but Europe is quite active and busy, and I think that is because we have a sea of fighters over there. Now, there is a huge exercise supposedly happening, supposedly happening, um, but let's see. Uh, you can see pretty active uh, in terms of, look at this little fly around there into Kuwait, kind of goes around Israel, right? But uh, very active over there from that standpoint. And uh, look at the United States. Again, last three days, very heavily populated off the coastlines, west coast all the way up to Washington State, down towards Southern Cal. Again, Hawaii. See these transitions? That's the stuff I think we need to pay attention to because that's telling me they're moving more than likely fighters across the United States. All right. And then up the east coast. Notice these broken traces, too, that come down towards Central America, right? That one there that's broken, headed down towards probably towards Caracas, right? Okay. <clears throat> Again, air refuelers, all right? So we'll go back over here to our mini, and um, let's just, uh, let me peel this back, get rid of those, and what I want to look for are fighters, and the only thing I see are two. We've got an F-15, a Eurofighter. I'm not seeing any F-16s or anything else for that matter. So uh, this actually looks like a little F-15 up here, All right? Yeah, it's probably a National Guard. And let me just break that back, one single Eurofighter. So looking at the amount of, of uh, air refuelers that are up over Europe, especially over Europe, that's a very good indicator that we have a lot of fighter activity over that same region, okay? So... Uh, we'll leave it at that, right? This is where we are right now. Like I said, 262 up over the United States. Notice the loon balloons. We'll look at that here in just a second as well. I'm going to pull this back down, and um, we're going to actually look at the watch list to start. Now, if you're noticing from the watch list perspective, I want to point out something right here. These are two intelligence balloons side by side, and then it looks like an R-135 kind of creeping into the picture there too. That is over Nevada. Right, but I, if you'll notice, I'm going to point out some things that are look to be uh, eyes on in the Reno area. Right now, we know we get a lot of of illegals 
being pushed into Reno. That, Jenna, that is going to be your DOJ. Okay, that's actually the director of the DOJ. It looks to be headed westbound. All right, just kind of scooting through, looking to see if anything catches my eye. I see a lot of Border Patrol and, and Homeland Security stuff. And then we get over here to the Asian side of the house. I've got an E3 Century, a couple C-17s. We still have, looks to be, a distress call from a drone that's kind of over the Turkey, Greece side of the house. And then another C-17, just a flurry of C-17s. You can see that one going into Qatar, uh, India, up to the north towards Pakistan. All right. Okay. That's where we are from that aspect. Now, if we look at, uh, let's look at the Intel community. And again, we'll start out over in Europe just to show you the, the little spot, you know, where they're looking back and forth between Croatia and Serbia, kind of probably looking at both sides, right? And that's because most of these aircraft aren't down looking, they are side looking, right? You see a flurry of activity along and over Israel, which, uh, then uh, And then, of course, Kaliningrad. We always just fly a little circle around them. And a little bit there, South Korea looking at North Korea. And uh, I'm trying to see nothing there. Now, the interesting piece, too, is I am starting to see a bit of a stack up going on over in Malaysia, right? Near Singapore, I'm seeing a lot of uh, weather mod flights, just different various things happening over there. It seems to be very active and busy. Again, there's that Reno part, right? Right, Intelligence community. So they're, they are concentrating on the stuff over around Reno. All right. Again, that's where those uh, Intel balloons are, are camping out. Okay. All right. Now let's look at the R-135s. Again, over Vegas, you can see it transitioning out from Lincoln, Nebraska. Notice the two different directions. One looking towards Reno, and the other side view kind of looking out towards Utah and Colorado and then out towards the west coast near San Diego. We've got that one. Let me back that up because I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me back it up just a little bit. And uh, you'll notice um, that's the part, I, th I believe, looking at more than likely the coastline of San Diego. That's looking at the Texas coastline. This one you know, I used to think that uh, they were just doing regular route stuff, but I, I really think they're looking at the border from there, which is kind of crazy because it's <laughs> almost in the middle of the United States. Just goes to show you the technology. See that broken trace too? Headed out towards the Atlantic, towards kind of um, Guantanamo Bay and uh, the Bahamas, right? Don't see it out though. We just see the broken trace. So that one went dark on us. And then you'll see a flight coming out of England, probably Jake 17 or something, headed down towards Constanta and probably out over the Black Sea. And I'm looking for stuff over Persian Gulf area, but I don't see anything. I do see some stuff over Japan. We'll get over here and take a look. Just see the broken trace taken off out of Okinawa, headed toward South Korea. All right. Okay. So uh, then let me hit the drone aspect here. As um, you can see, the flurry of activity over that San Diego side of the house, again, very, very active and busy, right? Okay, then you see a broken trace, one headed out towards the East Coast. I see some stuff headed down towards Albuquerque. And then we get over to Europe, and it's really, really slow for a dr from, from a drone perspective. Real low altitude drone, and then you see another one there, north of uh, Libya, out over the Mediterranean. That thing has been there forever and a day, always looking at stuff. Then you've got some a little bit of work going on there in Bahrain and in Qatar area. And then notice just kind of wrapping around that little area that transitions between the Persian Gulf and uh, the Gulf of Oman. And then you can see some stuff going on here up in Japan. A little drone activity, all right? Nothing in Australia and um, really nothing in Africa either other than that part way up there near Libya. All right. That will kind of put us into what now we will look at, the C-17 traffic. Now, notice there looks to be some big transitions rolling across out of Hawaii into the West Coast, all right, down in the San Diego area. Look at this. C-17 is headed down towards Brownsville. My guess is that is 
just uh, it's probably has to do with Flash being headed down to Brownsville today. All right, more than likely motorcade stuff, whatever it is, uh, you know, ice cream, uh, portable ice cream stands, um, whatever. I, you know, I don't really know. Um, yeah, coming out of D.C. So you can kind of see that. Then look at the flurry of stuff along the East Coast headed across the drink. All right. Again, this is probably taking stuff that we're not going to have any clue of what really is on there. It could be anything from troops to tanks to, to whatever it may be. And then just see it coming in and out of uh, the Mediterranean into Cyprus, et cetera. Kind of an interesting flight pattern there. Right. And then see this one just kind of tucks in right just to the north of Yemen. I can't tell if that looks like it. Maybe it landed, but maybe it didn't. I see an altitude descent, but I don't see it actually going to the ground. Maybe we put some resources right there. And maybe it's missile defense. Maybe dropped off something there from that aspect. And then, of course, you get down into, again, Malaysia, right? You're seeing a lot of activity down there. We'll look closer at that when I get over to the NOTAMs. And uh, see this broken trace running down south of Australia? Yeah, you know where that's headed, don't you? Antarctica, right? There you have it. Somewhere down there. Now, if I could just get my geofencing to work properly down there, we would be able to actually catch him flying in and out. So, all right. Now, the last one. From a transport perspective, these are notorious for carrying the, the Special Forces guys. It's going to be your C-27s. They look a lot like a C-130, However, they don't have as many engines. It's only a two-engine solution, a little smaller uh, airframe. But look at the – you can see the flights in and out of uh, Tampa up towards the D.C. area, Norfolk, um, Norfolk area. And then notice these running into kind of the Latvia area along with uh, all over Poland right there. Okay. And then a flurry into Bulgaria and Hungary down into it looks to be Malta, et cetera. See all this, right? We've been watching a lot of activity happening there in that same area in recent days and weeks, really, I guess. Uh, there's been an uptick in Romania, Bulgaria, Hungary, et cetera, right? All right. And then down to Australia, you can see some moves there along the east coast of Australia. All right. Again, this is just C-27s. All right, let's get back over to our main. Let's get into the deeds of what's going on around the world. Uh, we're going to start off right here. This is the border issues, okay? Now, uh, it looks like uh, the current admin is busing waves of illegal border crossers into San Diego. If you notice in the picture here, I don't see a lot of women. I see a lot of dudes with beards. Just being Captain Obvious here. Uh, and Daddy Warbucks over here. Uh, but we get down just a little bit further. There are some data as we get into this. Again, look at these guys, right? Right, all dudes, no chicks. All right, we'll go down a little further. Uh, let's get into this. Since December, Border Patrol has dropped 42,000 illegals into San Diego, overwhelming the city. Uh, but that's not the total number. Let's get down a little further and we start looking at some of the other numbers in here. It says in just six months, the federal government has dumped 100,000 migrants, illegals, okay, into San Diego area. If you're in that area, you already know this, all right? Uh, the problem is when Texas shuts off their main port of entry, which is uh, going to be down there in Del Rio, well, then all of a sudden, it, uh, they start shifting, right? The NGOs start shifting everybody into California because you know you've got Newsom in charge. He's not going to do anything about this. He's going to basically allow them to just continue to enter, and this will be the new port of entry to get them to the numbers that they want uh, as they tear down our society, all right? And so now I've been reading a lot of articles about veterans in that area of San Diego basically working to shut down those entry points. Um, I'm, I, it's amazing, but I don't trust Newsom to not go after those guys, Okay. So that's one data point. The other one is uh, some independent news sources down in the Darien Gap area are saying that United Nations is working heavily to fly illegals into the United States from there. So they're just going to bypass the whole border thing and just fly them straight in. That's the plan. 
All right, it's the new plan. So, all right, now this is your main uh, culprit in terms of the flights going in and out of the country with illegals on them. And uh, you can see a lot of border areas that are lit up right now, but there are a lot of interior stuff too, okay? And um, this one, again, in Torino, we just talked about that. You've got this one coming out of Canada, headed down into what looks to be St. Louis. And then notice you're starting to see them coming down here, all right? Uh, Darien Gap is down here, so that's the area we want to watch to see if we start to see flights in and out of that location. But right now, it looks like they're staying focused on the center of um, Central America, right? Okay, check this out. Powerful atmospheric river expected to produce extremely heavy snowfall in the Sierras through March 3rd. Yeah, they're talking about 5 to 10 feet of snow up there in the mountains, uh, the Sierras and uh, the Cascades. Um, that's just astronomical uh, number in terms of snow. You know, you start talking 5 to 10 inches, and that's a lot, right? When you start talking 5 to 10 feet of snow, that's over the top. So let's go, while we're talking about this, let's get into the NOAA aspect. What are these boys up to, right? So uh, you can see, look at this, where we're starting, right? This is Taiwan, right? That's the NOAA NASA guys, the weather guys, all right? And uh, when we start to look at where this stuff is coming from, yeah, what are the odds, all right? And then I don't know what they're doing down here, maybe you know, releasing mosquitoes again or something uh, between here and Florida. That's probably what they're doing. I know that sounds crazy, but uh, yeah, that's what they do, all right? And then look at this. You can see them transitioning out over to uh, out over the Pacific, and uh, you can see that little push, that low line coming through. And those clouds, they don't look nearly uh, to the same level as uh, what we have seen in the past. Now, look at this, this monster coming in from behind it, right? And again, you get over here into this area. That's where we just looked at near Taiwan. It, uh, yeah, that's NOAA looking at these, uh, the formation of atmospheric rivers, or they are the formation people of atmospheric rivers. And then here's that Malaysia piece. We kind of get into, let me back it up a little bit. You can see us kind of pushing into the region, but you can see the turbulence in the exact area that the NOAA guys are. And then you can see this big wave coming in, uh, as well as this one coming. Uh, this is the box, by the way, the Teal 77 aircraft that is out uh, doing some of the research. All right. But look at that. Just massive amounts of turbulence coming in with this snowstorm and the uh, higher altitudes, okay? All right, so that's what you got coming to you in California, just nonstop, and it has been for probably the last 14 months, which is a really strange uh, cycle, okay? All right, let's get over here to Flashbang, and as you can see, he's headed to, to down to Brownsville, thus the C-17 activity headed down that way, and uh, don't forget, too, that Trump is actually headed down to Brownsville today, so this should be quite interesting, <laughs> having them both in the same area. But um, anyway, this is just uh, lip service. Yeah. Trying to figure out how they're going to, why Brownsville and not Del Rio or El Paso? Uh, because uh, Brownsville's got a slower, uh, much lower threshold of people coming through about 300 a day or something. I think I read and um, that's why, right? It's just, let's go down to an area that doesn't look like there's anything really going on. All right. If you want to laugh for today, here it is, right? Okay. A White House doctor claims that Biden is fit for duty after his physical. Uh, hey, let me just tell you a little nuance that was left out of this study, and that was the fact that uh, he declined to take the cognitive test. All right. So um, if you've ever been through a physical, right, uh, what well, they do, uh, check your prostate, um, you know, hit your knees a couple times, check your elbows. Can you, can you, you know, do you still have some flexibility? Can you stand on your heels? That kind of thing, right? Just ridiculous. Um, but uh, up here in the old Chrome Mag, he's got uh, you know a lot of issues going on, folks. Okay, now this is as we transition from uh, you know we know we do have a State of the Union coming up, but check this out. This is fascinating to me. All right, the U.S. GDP grew three hundred and thirty-four billion dollars in Q4. That growth cost the United States because of uh, the debt on the interest, et cetera. It cost us 834 
$1.5 billion in debt to grow that $334 billion. Let that sink in. We spent $834 billion to create $334 billion. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, if you do that in your bank account a couple times, you will quickly find that you have bounced a lot of things. That is the situation we are in. Uh, th this cannot be, this can't be, you can't maintain that for a very long period of time uh, before the bottom just falls out. And so, yeah, you can see there's kind of a bathtub effect here uh, going down. It really is kind of more flat than what they're trying to predict. But here is your big takeaway, as always. Um, <laughs> okay. In other words, the, the $834 billion in debt during Q3 to grow the U.S. economy by $334.5 billion, or exactly $2.5 billion in debt for every $1. So, yeah, you spent two and a half for every dollar in GDP growth. Yep. Cooking the books. Okay, on over to this piece. All right, this, we've been talking about the fact that there's drafts coming and all the other stuff. Are you ready to go fight for Ukraine? I'm not, I'm, and I am certainly not sending my kids over there to fight. But check this out. The Army plans to include a reduction of approximately 10,000 positions connected with counterinsurgency operations. So they're reducing 10,000 positions tied to counterinsurgency, 2,700 positions from units that are not regularly deployed, and 6,500 additional posts and training positions. Additionally, roughly 10,000 positions from the cavalry squadrons, security force assistant brigades, Infantry Brigade combat teams and Striker Brigade combat teams will be cut. Now, you see, we're about to go to war. And this is happening. We are doomed. We are doomed. Economically, from a war perspective, these are not good on any level. All right? Okay. Now, speaking of not good on any level, let me just show you something here. Texas wildfires continue to grow as firefighters struggle to contain the blaze. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff happening out here that the, the media is yeah, just kind of brushing over. Uh, but let's see, just to give you a general idea, it grew from 100,000 acres to 500,000 acres within 24 hours. All right, this is the, the area that's being impacted. We are praying for rain today that uh, this will uh, maybe at least get everything wet and get us out of this fire mode. But it doesn't just stop there. Check this out. Texas wildfires forced the shutdown at a nuclear weapon facility, right? So this is a, a plant that is um, manufactures nuclear weapons. It's the Pantex plant northeast of Amarillo. And um, yeah, so this is the area that is getting just hammered. And this place was surrounded and uh, uh, not good, okay, uh, because those are nukes. All right, you don't want those things going off. Um, but let's go away from that. If you're familiar with the, the nukes, the B-61, it's a gravity bomb. And uh, you can see there's a picture of it uh, in this image dropped, uh, being dropped from an F-35. Now, the other one they make is actually the warhead for the Trident nuclear subs, All right, so uh, which is a very big kaboom. Right. So we will just uh, leave it at that. But this is uh, one of the many bombs they make there, and they make a lot, right? Okay, and I'm just going to hit the video on this just for a second, just so you can see. It's over on Watchers. Uh, I've, I just You can see the fire and what has happened here out in uh, the West Texas or in the Texas Panhandle. You can just see things are decimated uh, as it has blown through. Yeah, it's a pretty bad scene out there. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail on that. I'll press on because of time. But um, all right, this is uh, over here on the four flight looking at the NOTAMs. I'm going to break it down because I want to show a couple things. This is looks to be a missile box, probably stuff coming in. But there's a lot of stuff going on out here in Malaysia, right? But there's also a lot of stuff happening down here in Australia. These new boxes that have just popped up down under, those are for LIDAR. So uh, this is tied to uh, basically doing surveys, area surveys. I've never in my life seen a TFR associated with an aerial survey. So uh, this is quite interesting. And then, of course, we've still got these kind of strange boxes out here 
near the Marshall Islands. That looks to be just a reserved airspace. That could be a re-entry for missiles coming into Roy Namor. All right, here is your flight aware aspect. This is going to be Ramstein, and um, you just notice looks to be troops triple seven, and um, that one I don't know what the deal is with that coming into Ramstein. Uh, Nomad Aviation, all right, so probably a little contractor uh, looks to be just doing a quick turn, but uh, looks like you got troops coming inbound from the camber aspect. And then well, let's look at RZE Poland. I'm not really seeing too much other than I see some German Air Force. Um, I'm not seeing the big 747s rolling in. I do see a camber coming in from uh, Rickenbacker. All right, again, indicator of troops. And uh, I do see that Western Global leaving that came in. That also coming out, uh, headed back to Frankfurt, actually. So again, probably troops. So what we do see happening in the forward operating base is some troop deployment. All right. Okay, check this out. Now, this. Putin makes a direct nuke threat to the West. And um, it says here he's made a direct threat to nuke the West, saying that Russia's nuclear weapons are ready. Okay. And um, he's basically saying they, uh, NATO and America, are active in other parts of the world, of course, and they continue to lie there and to deceive uh, they are preparing to strike our territory, and I think he's talking about that area along Ukraine, using the best possible forces, the most efficient forces to do so. Um, but nonetheless, he's saying that that will be me, be met with uh, a nuclear uh, answer. Okay. All right, let's move on over here to the Camber flights. Uh, just seeing some stuff headed in and out. Looks like Sophia. And uh, that's the area we've been watching, saying it's been very active and busy late as of late. Uh, not familiar with that. Uh, that's going to be kind of in this general area. All right. And uh, that's where we've been seeing the flurry of activity with the Intel community also. All right. And then this is the Brits version of the Cambers as well. Just noticed that one coming out of what looks to be San Bernardino headed back to England. What are you doing there? Don't know. And then Western Global just won Anchorage to Hong Kong. So uh, that looks to be a 747. All right. And that's probably not military related. And then this one, a little concerning. This is NATO flying into Nellis Air Force Base, Nevada. All right. Well, listen, uh, ran just a couple minutes over, but uh, that is going to do it for our sit rep today. And uh, again, uh, we seem to be at a very uh, high pace. Uh, in terms of things just kind of popping loose. And we're only headed into week, or sorry, month three of the year. So uh, buckle up. It's going to be a wild year. I can see it already. Okay, listen, keep that powder dry, stay frosty, and uh, we'll see you soon. God bless. Monkey out. Thanks for watching, folks. You can check out the latest gear and products by selecting the QR code on your screen now or go to monkeyworksus.com.